This next question that I have was around the cardiovascular system, and that should say and appendix L. Um, this is specific to CPT, and the question that I received was, um, oh, can you cover cardiovascular system um, as it relates to appendix L and the codes 36200 through 36299? If you haven't seen Appendix L, Appendix L is in the back of the CPT manual, um, back where the appendices are in blue, and what it is is it's a vascular tree. Well, it's great if you understand what it's there for, uh, and that's a really common question I get is, well, how is this going to help me at all? Uh, you know, I'm much better with pictures and that sort of thing. Okay, draw a picture. Um, and what you're going to find is, I'm going to talk through a couple things. First, I'm going to talk about what Appendix L is and how it relates to those codes that were mentioned, those 36200. Think the 362XX codes, right? That 36200 to 36299. Well, the first thing I want to say is Appendix L is a vascular tree. The goal of that vascular tree is to help you figure out how far a provider inserted a catheter when they were looking for something, right? They were doing a catheterization. But that appendix actually makes two assumptions. Now, one of these assumptions they call out in black and white right at the very beginning of the chapter. They say they assume that this started from the aorta, right? Provider already had the cath in the aorta, and they were making selections off of the aorta. The thing that it doesn't go on to say, the assumption is um, that I will say there is an assumption that the patient has normal anatomy. Now, I'll be honest with you, on the CPC exam, on the COC exam, on those core credentials, they are not going to give you a patient who has abnormal anatomy. The only time you're going to start seeing abnormal anatomy is if you get into like that CERC exam, the Certified Interventional Radiology and Cardiology Coder, because they're, they're coding a lot of cardiac casts, and there are patients that have what we call variant, um, variant arch anomalies, so things don't look right. Don't worry about those for these purposes. For, for Appendix L, patient has normal anatomy and we started in the aorta. So let's talk a little bit about the anatomy. Um, if you could scroll up so you can see my little picture there, Lorene. Now I went old school for this. I got out a pen and paper and drew a little picture and got my crayons out, as you can kind of tell. Um, but what I want to explain is what they're talking about when they say first order, second order, third order, those types of things. The, the little white arch at the bottom that I've got labeled the aorta. Remember that the aorta runs the entire thoracic and abdominal cavity. It's actually one thing that I like to point out because people don't always realize this. When we start a cath, usually the most common access point for a catheterization is the femoral artery, right? Right there in the groin, right in the bend of the hip. Uh, and I always ask, okay, why'd they go in there? Well, the reason they went in there is the two femoral arteries turn into the iliac arteries, and where they attach is the very bottom of the aorta. That's where it starts. And then it runs all the way up and curves around, and your heart sits right there, attaches to the front of the aorta. Okay? So in the top part of the aorta, you've got these three main arteries that branch off of there. You've got the left subclavian, the left common carotid, and the anominate. Okay? Now remember, in every anatomical drawing, um, you'll notice the left subclavian is on your right. That's because it's drawn as though the patient is facing you. Okay, so that's when you're thinking about these. Make sure you're thinking that way. We've talked for, um, for years, and I know Loreen and Alicia have taught this before, and they say, you know, they talk about where it branches off. Every time it branches, every time it forks in the road. Well, I tried to illustrate that with color. Because when they are in the aorta, that's considered a non-selective catheterization because they didn't select anywhere. If you think about it, they're on the interstate. Okay? They haven't picked which exit they're going to get off at yet. They're just driving on the interstate. <laughs> as soon as they pick an exit, okay, they pick one of those three main arteries to go into, they have branched off into that first road off the interstate. Okay? So think of that. That's your first order. Those purples are all your first order. It's either the anominate, the left common carotid, or the left subclavian. Now, the first opportunity that they have to branch off of whatever road they picked. So let's say that they took that left common carotid right there in the middle, went right up it, okay? It then branches, see where it gets into the two different red sides? It forks off. It says, okay, I was the left common carotid, but now you can go east or you can go west, right? It's either going to be the internal or the external common carotids. 
then that branches off even further. Those are the blues. So each time it branches, you move further out. For purposes of a cath, they never um, go beyond third order when we start talking about coding perspective. When you actually look at the codes, it says first, second, third, or beyond. Okay, um, And that's what you'll see here when we start looking at Appendix L, right? They're giving you that same thing. They're saying, oh, well, we went in the anominate, and then we branched off into the right common carotid, and then we went into the right internal carotid. They're telling you how far they went. So if you've got a if you've got documentation, right? You've got a record, and the provider says, "Oh, well, I went into the let's say for this purpose, you went into the right internal carotid." You can go to this appendix L, and you can find right internal carotids right over there under third order branch at the very very top, okay? And you know, hey, that's a third order branch, and to get there, they had to have gone in the anominate, into the right common carotid, and over to the internal carotid. Okay, that's helping you figure out, oh, it's a third order, so that when you look at those codes, now, that was a very large range that was given, 36200 through 36299. It actually doesn't apply to the whole range, because the very first code, 36200, says insertion into the aorta. That's a non-selective cath. That means all we did was put the cath in the aorta. We never turned off the main road. This, it, this appendix doesn't even come into play. It also doesn't come into play if you're looking at the renal arteries because in the middle of those 36200 codes, there are specific codes just for the renal arteries. Where it comes into play is 36215 through 36218, which are saying that you did a, a selective cath of one of these three off of the heart that basically feed the thoracic and brachiocephalic arteries. So it feeds the brain, it feeds the arms, and it feeds the chest cavity. That's where that comes into play. And then you also see 36245 through 36248, which says, oh, well, you went into one of the arteries that feeds the abdominal cavity or the lower part of the body. Okay, That's the only time that you're really going to need to know how far did they go, first order, second order, third order. The next question that I get is if you look at those codes, if you were to look at 36215 through 36218, and I don't know if that's something you can bring up, Lorene. I am doing it. How did you know that? Oh, good. Because I know you. You're awesome. <laughs> if you look at those codes, the one thing I want to point out is you can never add, like if you bill and say, oh, we did a third order branch, right, of a brachiocephalic. So we, we went in to the right internal carotid artery. You cannot then add a code that says, oh, I also put it in the aorta. You had to put it in the aorta to get there. It's bundled in. It's included. Um, right? you got to give them, give them the drill or give them the map. You, know, you had to go there to get there. Um, but what you can do is you'll notice that all of these codes, starting with the 36215, say initial, right? Initial second order branch, initial third order branch, and then there's an add-on code that says each additional. When we say initial, that means the first one they went into because they may have gone into the right internal carotid artery and then they may have pulled that catheter back out and gone into the right external carotid artery. They went into two different branches of the same tree. Every time that they had to ne negotiate around one of those little turns, because my picture, it looks really big, those arteries are teeny tiny. I mean, some of them are the size by hair. Getting in there takes a lot of skill. So we're going to pay them every time that they had to do the work of, oh, i got to get into the right one and make sure I'm in there and adjust that. Okay. So that's why when you look at this, Lorene's got the page pulled up there. You'll see 36215 says each first order okay, within a vascular family, and then 36216 says the initial second order. 36217, I believe, says initial third order. And then the 36218 says each additional second or third or beyond. So the way that you're going to report these depends on how many they went into within a vascular family, right? Oh, sorry, it jumped around on me. It's all right. And I'm having a coughing fit here, so <laughs> I'm trying to do okay. both at the same time. I should have done a. I should have done a. A paste in, and I didn't. That's okay. I apologize. We'll get there. You there. live and learn, right? You figure out. Ooh, that works. Getting so well. to see the bubble and highlighted, 
you know, uh, te technique that we teach. So <laughs> that's true. All right, there we go. So there's the two seven, the, the first third order. Okay, okay. and we're so you're gonna you're gonna code for that initial. How how far in did they go? How selective were they? Did they go, you know, did they go all the way into the right common carotid and then pull back out and go somewhere else? Because if they did, I would be able to say, okay, I had a 36217. I had an initial third order or more selective thoracic or brachiocephalic branch within a single vascular family, right? And within the anominate, I went all the way to the right internal carotid. And then if they pull back out and they went into the right external carotid, I have an add-on code that says, oh, they had an additional third order within a vascular family, right? We went into that, we went in somewhere else. We get a bill for each one of those that we had to go that far down. That's how that tree really comes in handy. The reason that I drew the picture is twofold. One, I'm a very visual person. <laughs> I want to see, show me the anatomy and then I can figure out how that silly tree associates with it, right? Because I really could go through here and label all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and what I did in my book is in Appendix L, where it says the innominate, the left common carotid, and the left subclavian, I wrote 36215 to 36218. I need yep. those codes. That's what it's telling me. And then down where it talks about the, you know, the lower, um, the abdominal ones, yep, right down there when they start talking about, go a little bit farther, the celiac trunk, okay? Um, is it that one? I think it's that one. Let me look. I have my book right here. Sorry. Yeah, that's the left yeah. gastric. Yeah, it's next to the celiac trunk and the superior mesenteric. Both of those I wrote in 36245 to 36248 because I know, okay, well, those codes, I need to I need to deal with that because those are really the only two places that this tree comes into, to, comes into play. That's why you'll notice for all of the other ones, they don't really even give you the branches off of there or how far it breaks down because those codes aren't dependent upon that. Even for the renal arteries, it just says renal artery, right? And that's because the renal arteries have their own codes and they don't get into this first, second, third thing. Mm -hmm. It only applies to those five areas. Now, I've heard it taught above the diaphragm, below the diaphragm for those two mm -hmm. groupings. That's I, That always stuck with me. I like that. And I actually draw that line um, right where you're at on that page between the bronchioles and the recurrent esophageal arteries is where the diaphragm is. Oh, right here. Mm hmm goes right between the bronchioles and the recurrent esophageals. And that's so everything where the above the diaphragm is, is the 362, um, I'm sorry, the 36215 through 36218, and then below the diaphragm is the 36245 through 36248. Do you need more medical certification training? Go to www.cco.us. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates.